Welcome back uh, to this session on conjoint analysis. In this session, we are going to look at the optimization formulation of the conjoint problem. So if you recall in the last session, we said uh, we are going to collect uh, the data on uh, the product variance on uh, various attributes. And then we are also going to collect data on uh, the consumer preferences. What does the consumer choices are? Uh, so uh, either the problem can be solved using uh, mathematical methods like optimization or the problems can be solved using statistical method. In this session, we are going to explain the formulation of the optimization problem. Now in the optimization uh, formulation itself, there have been lots of attempts, uh, very, very uh, uh, insightful uh, optimization problems formulated uh, that get uh, really sophisticated and complicated. What we are going to discuss is a very basic linear programming formulation for the conjoint analysis problem. In particular, the formulation that we are going to discuss in this session comes from this, this uh, article. Uh, so this article is famously referred to as the LINMAP, uh, L-I-N-M-A-P, LINMAP, LINMAP method. And it's a very old uh, article, uh, very uh, relatively older article. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Professor Srinivasan at uh, 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 Rochester at that time, University of Rochester at that time uh, and Alan Chalker. So, uh, uh, so whatever we are going to describe, in fact, the notations uh, we are going to describe are essentially from this article. Uh, so let us, let us get into what this optimization problem is. And as we highlighted, this is the simplistic formulation. This is the linear programming formulation of the opti of the conjoint analysis problem. So let me explain this formulation uh, geometrically first. Okay. So uh, uh, let, let me explain that uh, uh, on, on our graph and let me for now simplify the product and say that the product uh, is defined only on two attributes. Uh, in the last session, we described uh, uh, that uh, product can be defined on multiple dimensions. Uh, for example, a car uh, has so many dimensions, right? Uh, uh, the engine, uh, uh, engine and, uh, 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 and the seating capacity, the car type, whether it is a coupe or a sedan or a SUV, right? Uh, so it has multiple dimensions. It has color, it has brand, uh, uh, it has uh, safety features, so many attributes. Uh, to geometrically explain all that, uh, let me reduce uh, the dimensions and uh, say that the car, uh, the product is defined only on two dimensions, two attributes. So this is something similar to the potato chips example that we had described in the last session, where we said the potato chips are described on two attributes, crispiness uh, and the uh, quantity of uh, potato chips in a, in a pack. So two attributes. So let us say that these are the two attributes. Attribute one is on the x-axis. Attribute two is on the y-axis, right? Uh, and uh, uh, for on, on these attributes, let us define uh, each product variant, each option that is made available to the consumer, and ask about the choices. So every product variant uh, will have two dimensions. For example, uh, let us say O1. Uh, let us say O1 is here, and it will have a uh, it will have an x-axis uh, coordinate, and it will have a y-axis coordinate. So this is the y coordinate, this is the x coordinate uh, for uh, uh, product variant number one. Uh, in the notation of uh, the article, it is actually referred to as y11 and y12. y11 uh, is the attribute, uh, is the value on the attribute one and y12 is the value on the attribute two for product variant one, That's right? So the first notation here denotes the variant and the second subscript here denotes the attribute. So for, uh, for product variant one, what are the values on each of the attribute dimensions? Right. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, like we have discussed earlier, uh, we are not going to offer a single product variant to the consumer. We are going to offer a set of product variants uh, to the consumer. And let us say that these are all located somewhere here. Right. So O2 probably is somewhere here, right? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, similarly, uh, each one of them, each one of them have a dimension uh, on, on attribute one and something on attribute two. Each one of them have a value on attribute one and some value on attribute two. Now, what is the goal of conjoint analysis? The goal of conjoint analysis is uh, to look at this product attribute data, ask the consumers their choices. Right. Ask the consumers their choices. So here we are going to ask the consumer, do they like O1 better or O2 better or O3 better or O4 better? 
right uh, so uh, uh, options right o, o, o essentially is is for options uh, so do they like option 1 do they like option 2 do they like option 3 do they like option 4 or we can ask them pair wise comparison so between uh, option 1 and 2 what do you like between option 1 and 3 what do you like uh, so we are going to get that choices data we obviously have described the attribute data and from there what is the objective of conjoint analysis the objective of conjoint analysis is to first of all identify uh, the weights, the importance assigned to attribute 1 and attribute 2 by the consumer and second important objective was to identify the ideal option that can be designed or that can be offered to the consumer. That ideal product or that ideal product variant will be something that the consumer would prefer the most. right? So let us say that uh, that ideal product is located at X. Okay, That ideal product is located at X. So this is where this is where the ideal product is located. Now let us say that uh, this ideal product, which is right now not given in the set, uh, the coordinates of this is something that we need to find out, right? So let us say that uh, the coordinates are x1 and x2, right? Uh, 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 why am I using the notation in x1 and x2? Because as I said, I am going to use the notation that were used in the original article, right? Here I, I am not uh, changing. Uh, uh, the notations used uh, so that there is no confusion. I am going to use the same notations used in the original article. I am only describing the method. Uh, so they had uh, described the optimization problem, but before we get uh, we get into the optimization problem, let me explain that geometrically, which is what we are going to do. So what is X? X is that ideal option. Ideal option that needs to be offered to the consumer. Why are we going to offer this? Because we believe that this is going to be the most preferred option. Right, uh, oh, amongst uh, so they gave us uh, they gave us choices uh, <coughs> amongst O1, O2, O3, O4. We feel ideal product is somewhere at X, right? And X could be anywhere on this, right? Uh, X could be here, X could be here. We don't know. We don't know where the uh, where the X is located. Uh, the uh, one of the objectives of solving this linear programming problem is to find out the coordinates of X1 and X2. Now, how are we going to find? Now, uh, earlier we said we are going to ask consumers their preferences. Now, let us say that the consumer preferences are collected on pairwise data. So, I will say between option 1 and 3, between option 1 and 3, what do you prefer? So, if the consumer says they prefer option 1 over option 3, if they say something like that, how are they going to say that? How are they actually saying that they prefer option 1 over option 3? What are they thinking when are when they are giving me uh, when when the consumer is giving me some preference like this? So obviously, consumer has an ideal point in mind, right? Consumer has an ideal point in mind. My objective is to figure out this ideal point. Consumer has an object uh, ideal point in mind, and consumer is then saying, "How far is option one from my ideal point?" Let me draw that or or. Uh, how far is uh, option 1 from uh, my ideal point? How far is option 3 from my ideal point? So consumer in her mind probably measures this distance between the optimal, the, the ideal point and each of the options that I am asking the preferences for. Right. So uh, probably consumer, consumer does this. So consumer says that D1 is the distance between ideal point and option 1. D3 is the distance between ideal point and option 3, right? D1 uh, is the distance between option 1 and ideal point. Similarly, D3 will be the distance between option 3 and ideal point. Consumer never told me where the, ide where the ideal point is. However, I do know the location of O1 and O3. So, I can find the distances only in terms of the ideal point uh, coordinates of uh, which are x1 and x2, but I don't know currently x1 and x2. So, I cannot find a numerical value for D1 and D3. I can find a mathematical expression in terms of X1 and X2, right? Because the coordinates of O1 and O3 are known to me. Now, after calculating or after mentally calculating the distances D1 and D3, what does the consumer say? Ha, huh, you know what? Option 1 is closer to ideal. Option 1 is closer to ideal than option 3. Option 3 is slightly further away from the ideal for that particular consumer, right? This is what consumer is thinking. I ask the consumer, give me your preference between 1 and 3. Consumer is now saying, okay, let me calculate the distance D1. Let me calculate the distance D3. 
and consumer is saying you know what option one is closer to my ideal then option three is closer to that ideal so therefore i would prefer option one over option three because o1 is closer to ideal which essentially means that in consumer's mind when consumer is giving some option like that consumer is saying d1 is less than d3 that's what consumer is saying right consumer is saying d1 is less than d3 option 1 is closer to the ideal that means it is closer d1 is smaller d3 is larger right and similarly consumer does this kind of mental exercise every time i ask them to give me preferences for a pair so when i if i ask the consumer give me the preferences for the pair 1 2 consumer calculates consumer calculates consumer has already calculated d1 and then consumer calculates d2 consumer calculates d2 and if consumer thinks if consumer thinks that option number 2 is closer to the ideal than option number 1 then consumer is going to tell me that she prefers 2 over 1 right in that sense what is she what is she saying what is she telling me she is telling me that d2 is less than d1 d2 is less than d1 that's what consumer is telling me now using all these preferences data using all this preferences data i know which of these inequalities are true and which is, which of these inequalities are not true right so if i know that uh, consumer is saying uh, 1 over 3 that means i know that d1 is less than d3 i know that d3 less than d1 is not true right so uh, i i know this and from these kind of choices data i have to figure out the value of x1 and x2 right i also have to figure out when consumer is giving me this kind of preferences are they looking at the x coordinate more or are they looking at the attribute 2 coordinate more right that will tell me the weights that will tell me the weights assigned that will tell me the weights assigned to each of the attributes so is d2 is d2 d1 calculation driven more using attribute 1 dimension or using attribute 2 dimension so here i should clarify myself i should not say distance between o1 and ideal point i should say weighted distance so we are going to calculate weighted distance okay so that is the basic idea so what does this linear programming problem do linear programming problem helps me identify this ideal location that is available only in the mind of the consumer i don't know where this ideal point is i want to figure out the coordinates and it is trying to find the weights assigned by the consumer to each of the attributes using what data using the location of each of the option i know the location o1 o2 o3 o4 i know i know the locations right i also know the preferences i also know the preferences if i ask the consumer to give me preference between 1 and 3 consumer is going to tell me 1 over 3 that means consumer is indirectly telling me that for her d1 is less than d3 consumer is telling me d2 is less than d, uh, d1 right consumer is telling me all this now using all this can i figure out this which is my objective number one can i figure out this which is my objective number two that is what this linear programming problem does